girl, you are black as hell. That's not exactly what the woman perched in the aisle seat says to me, but it's what I hear as our plane hits a second round of turbulence in half an hour. Even Heaven seems annoyed by her incessant yapping about all things relevant to only her. Thank God this flight only has a little more than two hours to go. My roommate is too cheery for six in the morning. I should be taking my first pee, not listening to a complete stranger with zero sense of boundaries or discretion, chattering about social media and current events while casually tossing in how pretty I am for a dark-skinned girl. Make that extra dark, as if I'm not already aware. Her thin lips latch onto the rim of her styrofoam coffee cup as she flips her bright red curls, utterly oblivious of how insulting her backhanded compliment really is. Somehow, my blatant snub and wide-eyed silence isn't the effective deterrent I'd hoped it would be. Now she's circling from waxing about visiting her elderly grandfather for a spell in Frisco, Texas, back to her fascination with my skin. God, I don't have the strength to speak layman's right now. I hope you don't find this rude, but your skin is simply luminous to be so dark. There, I finish for her. She knows it's rude before she alludes to it. My submissive face takes over as I lean against the window, observing her green eyes grow into saucers and soak up all this darkness in awe. Makes you want a Snickers, huh? Her paltry giggle in response to my direct jab is a staunch reminder of the harsh scrutiny my particular shade of black forces me to deal with every day. She just doesn't get it. She chirps her name as if I care enough to register the pointless syllables in my memory bank. Sandy, Penny, Chrysanthemum, hell, who knows what she just rattled off. For the rest of this flight, from Los Angeles to Dallas, all I want to hear is my playlist while I catch a few Zs. What's her name blinks, taking a brief respite from her irrelevant musings to breathe. Facing me, she rests an elbow on the armrest and perches her head on top of her hand. Curiosity etched across her heart-shaped face. Seriously, if she doesn't stop staring, I will invoice her for a counseling session. Sis acts like my skin's giving her third world healing. Your braids are so unique. She sings loud enough to provoke the passengers occupying the rows in front of and behind us to indiscreetly investigate for themselves, as if I can't see them squirming in their seats just enough to judge whether her assessment's on point. 